Monday morning and I'm out here playing in the shop. I had some stuff that I had to get done today, but I had this chuck sitting on my bench, so I had to clear it off. So I hadn't really intended on doing any work on this today, but like I say, since it was kind of in the way, why well, I thought I'd get it, get it out. Now in the first part, why we went ahead and machined the backing plate, we shortened that up. And um, it came out fine. I'm happy with it. What I've done today, and it's before I showed it, was I went ahead and put the backing plate back on, and I just took a facing cut across it. It had a step in it, so we stepped it down, and that uh, registers on the on the back of the chuck. And I've got the back portion of that chuck here. I've still got it set up in the lathe. So, and I'm not going to take it apart because we're indexed up and zeroed again, but anyway, I've got the backing plate on here, and then this is the back portion of the chuck before I assemble the rest of it. And I'll go over what the plan is for that, but I wanted to show you where we were at. We're indicated back in. I went ahead, like I say, I skimmed across the across the face of the backing plate, and then went ahead and recut that register, skimmed across that, and squared up where it registered on the, on the back. And we're running within uh, about two-tenths. So let's see if I can bring you in here a little bit more so we can see this indicator. We're zeroed out there. And we're running, like I say, right at right at two tenths. Or just a shade under. This is a half a tenth indicator. There's zero. And there's our well it's still there we go. There's our two tenths out. And I'm perfectly happy with that for this, this application. Alright, well here's our chuck body. First let's look at our, our ring and our let's look at our parts here. These are our jaws and we saw how bad they were worn to start with. They're pretty well chowdered up. I already went ahead and just took it over the bandsaw and just made a cut there to see how how hard they were. You know, I had a, an indication of it and I, but I figured they'd cut pretty well. And they do. They'll, they'll cut right off of there. So what I'll do is I'll take these with the bandsaw and I'll bob them off and then we'll set them up probably in the shaper and skim the top and, and uh, do our cuts there, but we'll get to that probably in the next, in, when we finish this up. So anyway, this is our ring gear, and we still got a little bit of grease and crap back in here. It had a whole bunch of old, old grease built up in it, which is probably why it's in as good a shape as it is. And we've got some shiny spots along here, but, um, and I can see some wear marks down in on the, on the ring gear, but all in all, it looks pretty good. Same way with the pinions, they all look really good. So. I'm not going to do much of anything to them. I may deburr that ring just a little bit. But anyway, this chuck body, and this sits down flat, so this will come flush with the with the backing plate there. But we, this was all painted, and it was painted black. Now the the paint on the backing plate, and it's a steel backing plate. It's not cast. When I ran them all through the electrolysis tank, why they cleaned up pretty well. But this was stained and it's etched pretty bad. And I've run it in a couple of times and it immediately, this cleans off, but it's got some etching on it. And my original thought was that I might actually clean these up and run them through the bluing tanks. But as bad as it's etched down in there, why that still looks like crap. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do, since it was painted before, why uh, I think I'll go ahead and powder coat them. And that's pretty much my plan. I'll clean this up a little bit more, but then I'm just going to take it to the sandblaster. We'll sandblast the outside surfaces because it's immediately flash rusted up again and there's quite a bit of staining on it. But um, I've got some of that custom mix bluish gray that I used on the uh, steady rest and the follower rest when I redid them. So I think I'll use that same color on here and we'll just mask off what uh, what surfaces we don't want on there and I'll do all that before I assemble it because we just want the we just want this outer surface is all we want powder coated. Same way with the backing plate. We'll do the uh, we'll do the mounting plate and then the, the back of the the uh, chuck that sits in here. But we're not going to disassemble anything else, and, and we won't reassemble it until we do that. So that's kind of the next thing. We'll go ahead. We'll get these powder coated up, and I'll show you them, and we'll see how smooth it's going to go back together, and how it was going to run halfway decent, and then we'll turn our attention to the jaws and finish this up. Well, how about if we put this mess back together again? And all we're going to do is list and grease this all up real well. And um, get it back together. Get the body back together. Oh, come on now.
because uh, there's many more marks on here. Well, let's see if we can figure out where they are. We're going to put the top one first. Looks like so there's a 34 mark there. Very well. Yeah. So we're going to go back there just like that. I have to go to the here, so it's not like I have to go Now, the other day, this is still crappy but it's not something I think we get special. Well, I've been making a little mounting block for underneath the chuck like I do with all of my chucks that I use a fair amount of the time just because as I get older I don't want to fight the extra weight of them. But I thought while I was here I'd check run out on this. Now, I haven't started cutting the jaws down other than to make a little initial little cut in one of them to see how easy they were going to be to cut. But I went ahead and set up this piece of, I think it's probably inch and a eighth or inch and a quarter round stock and it's just a piece of cold roll I believe and we threw the dial indicator back on it so we've got it mounted up on our backing plate and everything it looks like it runs real true and everything and if we watch our little dial indicator here let me get this to, to zero to verify that we're at zero and that's about where we're starting out right there so we've got less than two tenths out. Alright, I don't know how well we can really see this, but if we look at these clamping surfaces down here, we've got contact at the bottom and looks like we've got quite a more bit more gap up at the top. They're way, way, way worn. Part of it's a slop in the jaws in the slot itself. It's got some play that way, but it's been run like that for so long that it's it's canned these jaws way out. So that's why we've got so much wear in the bottom and not on the on the top like we've seen in the in the previous pictures or the previous videos of these chuck jaws. So anyway, just really interesting to me that it's that worn. This is a, you know, I still consider this a piece of crap chuck. Um, but for what I want, I'm surprised it runs that true. And for what I want out of it, why, uh, once we get our, once we get our smaller, our, uh, ring jaws on there and they're interchangeable, we've lowered that center of gravity way down and everything It's going to work really well. So we'll, uh, We'll go ahead, get it, get it set up, and uh, I'm going to bob these jaws off after I get my block made. Then we'll set them up in the shaper, I think, and probably start shaping them down. Well, here's my labors of probably 45 minutes or an hour's work. And all I've got is just my little chuck retainer, not, or holder, not perfect, split out. This is just a couple old 2x6 pieces I had laying around. Glued them together, added some screws, got some cuts in the bottom so they match the, relatively closely match the ways, so they line up every time. Slide it underneath your chuck, undo your chuck, comes right off, it's sticky because it hasn't been oiled or anything yet. You can carry your, lift your chuck off, take it and store it away. Goes back on just as easily. Make sure everything's clean, slide it back up in place. Run your chuck back on, pull your block out of the way. Quick and easy, good storage solution. Makes it easier to get your chucks on and off, store them. You can just set them on a shelf, in a cabinet, whatever you want. They're a little bit offset because I've got a little bit of a 
drop on this side, which actually I could do away with. Doesn't need to be any taller than the rest of it. So they'll set right down on a shelf. And uh, just that easy. So anyway, I'm going to throw a coat of oil on it. Um, like I say, nothing spectacular. We're just going to oil them up. And uh, then that's ready to store it away. Hopefully you found something a little bit interesting. If you didn't have it already, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. Any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And thanks for taking the time to watch.